What is up everybody? Do you want to know how to set up baby tegus when you first get them? Well, I'm here in our baby tegu setup room and today that's exactly what I'm going to show you. So just a quick reminder guys, we now have merch available. These are our tribal Geeky Gecko Creations style t-shirts. They're pretty cool. So it's got this tribal lizard style. It says Geeky Gecko Creations. And then on the back, it has all of our social media promotions. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. All at Geeky Gecko Creations. And we do have five select colors that you can choose from right now with special edition colors and holiday themed colors to come in the future. All right, on to the video now. Okay, so entering this room, you will see something that looks similar to what bearded dragon breeders do. And what bearded dragon breeders do is they will take pieces of wood like this, this is just a two by four, and then UVB strips that you can buy at like Home Depot or Lowe's, and they will secure some fixtures to the wood, just like I did, and then I only just zip tied the wood to this metal barring so that everything is held in place, and voila, I have a heat fixture here, a heat fixture here, and then another UVB bulb there. If you do go with a UVB setup, I would recommend the Reptisun 10.0 UVB for most extreme sun species, such as bearded dragons and tegus. This is a good model that's been tried and tested for years in the reptile industry for tegus and for bearded dragons, and so this will be good for you. And it comes in two foot, four foot, maybe even three foot, a whole bunch of different styles for you. Okay, just taking a quick look in, you can see this little tegu's eyeballing us right here and they all just got to spray down this morning. So their cages are damp right now, which is good, holds humidity. They're gonna have a fresh water bowl in one corner. Be careful because they can crawl under the water bowl. And so I had to dig the substrate out so that none of them can get under the water bowl because they were starting to crawl under the water bowl and then it concerned me that if certain of them move out, while the other ones are left under the water bowl, the, the weight of the water bowl might be too heavy for like that one little one that might be left stuck under there to get out. And so I decided to dig all the way to the bottom of the substrate and put the water at the bottom so that none of them can go underneath the water bowl. Now this substrate is a mixture of play sand that you buy from Home Depot and also organic topsoil that you buy from Home Depot. It makes a wonderful mix. I would like to say that it is about a two to one ratio, two scoops of soil for every one scoop of sand. But it might actually be more than that. It might be like three scoops of soil or even four scoops of soil for every one scoop of sand. And you might say, Frank, well, how do I know? The perfect density that you're looking for is gonna be a density where you barely see sand particles in it. And the reason is, if the substrate is too sandy, it's gonna constantly be getting in their eyes and kicking up dust and it's just bad for humidity. And if the soil is not sandy enough, if it does not have enough sand in it, it won't clump up like this and it won't allow them to make burrows. So this is the perfect ratio. If I had to guess right now, guys, it is probably, I wanna say a three to one or a four to one ratio of topsoil being on the higher end to play sand. And you'll wanna to get topsoil from the store that is organic and free of fertilizer. And then you'll also wanna get play sand, which is naturally, if you read it, it says it's washed and it also is free of any chemicals or anything. That will be found actually in the concrete section of Home Depot. The next thing I have is a little humid hide here for them. So I just took a plastic tub and I cut a little hole in the front so that they can go in and I can spray in there once a day or once every other day to keep humidity in there. And then I just buried it with, because it's clear, I buried it with some extra soil here so that it gives the illusion of darkness in there while they are in there. Now you have to remember, this is a very temporary setup for me as a breeder who's just trying to 
quickly raise these guys, get them up to size, and get them shipped out to customers. So for me, I did not need to go too crazy. I just needed efficient. I want the animals to be healthy. I want them, I want it to be easy for me to constantly change their water daily, change their food daily, spray down their cage daily, and get to any animal to see if there's any health issues or anything going on. So for me, a simplistic setup works because I'm a breeder that is just trying to move these animals and this is just a middle step. Now the next thing is food. As you can see off to the side here, I have a small bowl of mealworms and in that bowl is also a one-to-one -one ratio of Vionate vitamin mix to Reptical calcium with no D3. So let me show you what I'm using. This stuff is called Vionate, Vionate for pets. It's an awesome vitamin mixture that has been used in the leopard gecko industry for the longest time with great success. And I think it still makes a great supplement for tegus, bearded dragons. I use this for everything in my collection. Now this does have a little bit of phosphorus in it. You can see the calcium to phosphorus ratio is about two to one, which is what you want. That's good. But just to be sure that the animal is getting enough calcium, we do something called extra calcium supplementation. So I'll take one scoop of this, and then I'll also take one scoop of this, Repti Calcium without D3, and mix it together, and that will be the mixture for the animals. Now you can see in this mixture, there is no phosphorus, which is good for reptiles. Again, low phosphorus is good for reptiles. Now the reason you want without D3 is because tegus are traditionally raised on ultraviolet radiation, which is UVB bulbs, those long strips of bulbs that we talked about earlier on in the video. UVB bulbs help the tegus turn their calcium intake into nutrition that their body can absorb. If an animal does not have a UVB bulb, like leopard geckos, you see behind me here, leopard geckos do not have UVB bulbs. Then we give them calcium with D3. So no UVB bulb, calcium with D3. UVB bulb, calcium without D3. That is the recipe. And just to touch on the fact how deep this substrate is, I put about two inches all around this tub. That allows for moisture to sit and sink deep down inside. It allows for escaped mealworms, superworms, roaches, to get out, bury deep, survive, and become a natural cleanup crew for this enclosure so that you barely have to clean it. As a breeder, I would barely have to clean it before I sell these animals because there is a natural decomposition crew, which you can see living in the soil, breaking down the poo and decomposing it. Now the hot spot you'll want for these guys is about 115 degrees. So whatever combination you need to do to get 115 degrees, that's what you'll wanna do. I use these bulbs from Home Depot, which emit heat. They're called outdoor floodlights, which means that they're basically water resistant, waterproof, which is good because I'm constantly spraying in this cage. This is the 90 watt version. It comes in many different wattages. So this is a 90 watt outdoor floodlight from Home Depot. And this is what the box looks like when you go to Home Depot. I always use Philips because Philips is the number one brand that is at the Home Depot that is in my state. But maybe Philips can give us a sponsorship. Shout out Philips. You usually get two to a pack is the best bang for the buck, unless you want to buy a giant pack, which you can as well. These bulbs last a long time. You're looking at six months to a year most of the time. And the sole purpose of this bulb is just for heat. And heat does it put out. The 90 watt bulb will generate about 115 to 120 degrees from about eight inches away, which is eight to 10 inches away, which is a pretty long distance. These bulbs generate a lot of heat, guys, a lot of heat. And as you can see, cleaning is simple. When you have the breeder set up, you just pull the tub out, push it back in when you're done. Now, one last aspect to the food supplementation for the tegus. Insects are good, and the insects are supplemented with calcium and all the vitamins that the tegus need. But some baby tegus are gonna benefit more from meat supplementation. So now I'm gonna show you the type of meat that we feed our tegus 
here from day one. So the type of meat that we like to use is ground turkey. So here I have a hamburger patty of ground turkey. I usually buy it in the big tubes, then I bring it home and individually package it like this into daily sized portions. Now what I noticed about this is that all of the babies that I have cannot eat this in one day. So I've started cutting this in half and that is my daily sized portion. Now why do you wanna portion it into daily sized portions? Well, I'm gonna show you. Now baby tegus eat a lot and so that's why you want it portioned into daily sized portions because you will be feeding them every single day as babies. Can they get by without feedings every single day? Absolutely. Can they go days without feeding? Absolutely, possibly even weeks. But to see your tegu grow in the best way and the healthiest and the fastest and the strongest, you're gonna to wanna to offer it something every single day. Their metabolisms are very fast, for the reptile kingdom. It's not like a snake where you only need to feed it once every couple weeks. Tegus are constantly burning energy every single day, so it's good to feed them every single day. I took the hamburger patty and I kicked on my water here at my faucet for about 15 minutes on the highest heat that it can handle. And this is pretty hot. I could barely keep my hand in there. And little by little, it started de-thawing and I could still feel a little bit of frozen pieces, so I'm gonna leave it in there a little bit longer. But as soon as this is ready, we're gonna give it to the tegus. Now you can microwave it, but when you microwave meat, it starts to cook out some of the nutrients and some of the proteins start to break down. So I really like to just naturally let it de-thaw and warm in some warm water instead of cooking it in 60 seconds and trying to de-thaw it. Um, I prefer to try this method first, which is about 15 to 20 minutes sitting in hot water for this small of a portion. If you have bigger portions of meat, it's obviously gonna take longer. Now, you guys know my favorite store, the dollar store. They sell these little paper plates here. You could get a ton of them for a buck, and all you need to do is rip this into little segments to feed all your babies. Now, the reason I really like de-thawing in the sink is because for raw meat, you're always gonna have to clean whatever surface and whatever area you are handling the raw meat on. Because raw meat and tegus is great, but raw meat and humans is not so great. So I really like to use the sink, that way it's less cleaning for me, less time, and more time and energy that I can spend with my tegus. Now the last thing you'll want to do to the meat is just a little bit of that calcium and vitamin supplementation. And again, the really good thing about ground turkey is that the little babies will just take little bites and chunks off of this meat product. If you put whole pieces of meat in there, the babies might not be able to get them down because the babies have very small tracheas. Naturally, the tegus are gonna go for this right away. They love meat. As soon as I put that meat in there, they usually start swarming around it, but especially in the, the first couple days of the tegu's life, motion really stimulates them. So I'll dump some mealworms or something on top of the meat, and so far, all the tegu's been doing great. All right, come on, we can see him eating right now. They start to smell the meat, they know it's there. This little one sees us right here, he's like, hey, it's a private dinner session. These little ones, they know something's up, and they're already taking little bites. See that? How this ground turkey is perfect. It looks like one big chunk, right? But really it's just soft little meat that they can just pull and rip apart. See how the black and whites are doing? We got one little one making a go for it. Back to the onlookers here. They're still a little hesitant. You know, it's early in the day. Their lights just turned on, but they will eat when they are ready. And clearly, these guys are ready. Okay guys, so I don't want to disturb these guys too much. I want them eating and growing strong so that you can purchase them. But in the last few minutes of this video, I'm gonna show you their parents. The high white red tegu parents that we have and the black and white tegu parents that we have so that you know where your baby tegu came from if you buy one from us. This is Big Red. He's gonna be the dad to all of our high white reds. You can see he has a really cool like heart-shaped, Superman-shaped pattern on the back of his head. He is awesome. Uh, if he thinks we're gonna feed him, he'll come out for us here a little bit. There we go, he sees some action going on over here. And he wonders what is going on. They, they know that these tongs mean food. Uh, usually he bites it, but there you can see some of the smartness of these guys, like they know what's up. 
you know what I mean? Movement still catches their attention. And bam, causes a bite. This is the viral Nefertiti. She is the black and white mother of our babies this year. She is high levels of black. So she is our really, really dark melanin black and white. And then we have another black and white that did not breed for us this year that is higher contrast of white. But she is definitely higher contrast of black. And uh, she went viral on a couple TikTok videos and whatnot because she is just super feisty. And let's see if we can get some of her feistiness here. She sees the feeding tongs. She's immediately going for it. And you could just, she doesn't care. She's bite first, ask questions later kind of gal. Still biting. She is awesome. She'd probably bite this camera if she had the chance. So. And she could actually jump this high. So we're gonna pull back a little bit here. Boom, perfect girl. And here is the beautiful infamous blush. She is just a beautiful high white red tegu. Uh, you can see really nice contrast of high whites on her sides compared to reds. Uh, she is fairly calm, fairly tame, so I can handle her and she's good. But she just really wants some food right now. You can see she's looking around. So we're gonna get them some food here in a little bit. But check out her colors, really nice high white contrast with just this beautiful blushing of red throughout her body. I've been told also that a little bit of greenish blue pigment on the top of the head could actually signify the anery gene. So she could be het for anery. None of the babies came out anery this year. So that means that both parents are not het for anery, but either parent could be het for anery on their own. So either she could be het anery or the red dad, which we just saw, big red, could be het for anery. Either one could be, but most likely both of them are not het because one out of every four babies would have been anery and we did not get any anery babies. But between her and the dad, I think she would be the one that would prove het anery. She comes from Laura Roberts' line of high white red tegus, which is the foundation of high white red tegus and the number one line of high white red tegus in the United States and the world really. Laura Roberts, she did a lot of work with the anery gene and so it's heavily hypothesized that a lot of her high whites, high white reds, are also het for anery. So, just beautiful. You can still see some nice blacking down the sides. She's a, she's a sweetheart. Love this girl. And of course, I gotta showcase my main man right here, Rex, or Big Rex as I call him. He's the father to all of our black and white Tegu you babies this year. He is the biggest sweetheart Tegu that I have. We bring him to shows, we bring him to schools. He's great with kids, great with teenagers, great with parents. So he is amazing. He loves to be held like a baby sometimes, just like this. And so at shows, we will let people hold him like this. And you can see he just tries to dig into your neck and just find a place to cuddle up and burrow. But he is an awesome boy. So what do you think? Do you think you might be getting a baby tag you this year? Maybe next year? Let us know, because we are gonna be breeding now into the future. I really love tag yous, guys. I think they're so, so personable. And if you have the time and the space for raising these guys, I think they beat any medium to big size lizard on the market that you could get your hands on. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more videos. And until next time, have a geeky gecko great day.